everybody, welcome back to another episode of Masala Chai. I am your host, Adrian, and I'm the only host because I have no friends who are willing to join today. I know what you were thinking. You thought I was going to say I have no friends, which is true, but uh, what, what I meant to say was I have no friends joining me today. Uh, the second episode is quite exciting. I, I'm very, very happy to do this because I got... A lot of very, very positive reviews from our very first podcast episode. A lot of people enjoyed it, and I could not be more thankful and happy that, that people are actually uh, watching this or, or listening to this. If you're listening to this on Spotify, I could not be any more happy and uh, and grateful. So thank you very much that that, that this is reaching out to, to an audience. I'm quite happy. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see that I have no face. I'm working on a better face cam. I might use my camera, I might use my phone, but for now, uh, you won't be able to see me at all. So it's actually honestly better if you watch this on, uh, if you listen to this on Spotify, then rather on uh, listening to this on, on YouTube, it's not going to be that different. Uh, Spotify is usually better with the audio enhancing and all that anyway. Uh, no compression. But pretty much, let's continue with our podcast today. Um, so last week, we talked a bit about... Uh, um, about life in general, uh, a question my cousin had, I had to address it to him, and uh, just about why I'm doing this. But today, I'm going to be talking about my army life, because uh, some people don't know this, people who are not really familiar with me personally, but I'm actually in the army in Singapore. I'm serving my country, National Service, two years, and actually tomorrow is the uh, tomorrow marks the, the very first year of my, my service here. So honestly, I'm quite excited to, for tomorrow. It's a, it's a mark. It's a milestone. Uh, 365 more days till I get out of this thing. I cannot wait. <laughs> there is legit an application on on Google Play and and, uh, and Apple Store that's called ORD, which is officially relieved from duty, I think. And uh, that's pretty much when we get our uh, I- IC back, which is our identity card. And uh, once we're given it back, we're free from the army. We can go and do whatever we like, which I need to go and go. To, I need to go to university because I'm a bit, a bit, a bit behind everyone else. Uh, about about two years, but I will be another year extra. I'll be like three years behind, especially when I'm going to university in 2023, because my my NS will only end in November 2022, which is in the middle of the uh, start of the academic year, usually in the US and uh, the UK. So yeah. That's that's just my 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 sad unfortunate uh, life. But uh, to be fair, guys, uh, everyone has their own path, and this is mine, and I've accepted it. And I am going to discuss with you what my life and my journey has been so far, celebrating this one year anniversary of living in miserable uh, army life. So it all started in uh, September, I think September two thousand and twenty. I have received my. Uh, my enlistment letter, they told me, yo, Adrian, we need you to pop by down to Singapore and just, you know, uh, we're going to shave your head off. We're going to give you some some army stuff and now you're going to be uh, a part of us. And so that's what that's what happened. Uh, actually, there's a quick backstory before what that happened. Actually, I was supposed to enlist a few months before uh, September. I enlisted November because that's when I was that was my intake. I was the last intake of 2020. But realistically speaking, I should have enlisted at around July or August, if I'm not wrong. Uh, I had a bit of a health issue, kind of a mix up. Uh, honestly, I'm fine. I, I didn't have a health issue, except, except the the, um, the hospital kind of screwed up. Um, I wouldn't say screwed up. They, they just really messed up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So they screwed up. <laughs> Basically, what happened was we all had to go for a medical checkup before we enlist just to see what what fitness we're at uh where where which vocation would would, would best fit us depending on our fit, uh, fitness ability so they'll do all the normal blood test urine check uh, urine test um i i i strength power test um x-rays ecgs all the normal normal stuff and once they've done that they'll give us this pes a pes is just a a status saying uh how fit you are and depending on the pest status, they'll put you in a specific location. Uh, so infantry, guards, uh, or whatever else. Like if there's a physical a physical work or if it's like an admin job where you just sit down and do some paperwork and stuff like that. So there's a lot of that kind of stuff going around. And um, I was given a D at first, which is uh, pending because I apparently needed more testing. They tested my heart and they said, oh, this guy's heart, something's up. Uh, it's not normal. They thought I had some kind of uh, double double beating thingy. I'm not really sure. I'm not too uh, 
technical with the terms and all that but essentially they said i had an issue with my heart and uh the ecg was all coming off weird there were there were like double um uh, palpitations yeah so i was having palpitations apparently and so they they extended my entire ns uh enlistment by like four to five months really so pretty much i had to go back and forth from indonesia to singapore just to do the checkup which was very very frustrating i think people can understand how expensive that is especially because traveling and i can't travel alone because of covid and all that um so my entire family has to come with me and uh it was it was a bit of a really 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 tough spot for all of us uh because covid was was not was not making things easy for me and i i had to do so many covid19 tests did like legit i i don't know how many of uh of the uh the pcr tests i did it it was very very painful my nose was like i don't even know it was pretty much like dead so that was that was that and uh, afterwards they the doctor called me up and they were like look we have our final uh, appointment uh we did some tests like the 24 hour ecg i had this thing strapped to my chest for like an entire 24 hours entire day and then i went back and submitted the the device and they checked my heart for the entire 24 hours and they were like okay everything's fine no worries and then I got a call like two days before I'm leaving the country and the doctor says, hey, look, um, you got a hole in your heart. And I was like, what the hell are you talking about, man? You just told me I was fine. And then he said, OK, I'm going to have to I'm going to need you to come back tomorrow, which is one day before I was leaving back to Singapore, uh, back to Indonesia. And then they're like, OK, uh, yeah, so let's let, we need to do one more last test and then we'll uh, we'll let you go. And then I go back and I do the test. You know, this is one day before I'm leaving. And then they were like, OK, uh, so pretty much we did the last test. And as I suspected, I was wrong because you have no hole in your heart. And then after that, bam, they gave me my pest status and I was off to Indonesia. I was there for about two, three weeks, maybe. And then I got my enlistment letter and they're like, look, we need you to come back to Singapore because you need to enlist now. And uh, that was quite frustrating because, well, I had just traveled back to Jakarta and now I have to move countries in like a week or two because I had to get a place prepared down here. I needed to move. I need to, you know, prepare for IPBT and all that kind of stuff, which is a, a physical proficiency test, which is kind of a pain in the ass in, in another way. But essentially, we had to do a lot of stuff and there was a lot of uh, technical work and uh, a, lot of, a lot of procedures, I would say, to to complete so there was that there was that and then uh, yeah so i enlisted and uh, i i will be honest with you I've, I've heard a lot of stories my mom has a lot of friends whose whose sons have have done ns before and my mom always told me this one thing which is that whenever the kids or the boys entered ns when they come back they don't come back the same way they entered because obviously the army is going to change them and uh, i always thought that that was just like a you know a scaring tactic just to get us a bit serious into serving the country, you know, making something of ourselves. But I only realized that they weren't wrong when I entered there. The very, very first day I entered, I was, I was, I was hopeful. I would say now I was trying to make the best of what I could. Obviously, I couldn't escape this. If I if I wanted to escape it, I had to cancel my PR, which means I'd lose everything. I'd lose the house here. I'd lose the the right to to come to this country without a visa. I'd anything to do with this country. I'd lose all the perks which I don't want to lose. I, I like the perks that I receive in this country and I, and I, want, I, I want to save that. So I, I'm, that's why I'm doing this or else I wouldn't be here. But with that, uh, a, a lot of costs were, were paid, which was my mental health. I was not really good. I, uh, I remember we were, we were confined for the first two weeks because uh, that's the transition period. We were given two weeks to stay in another island, not in Singapore. It's quite close by. It's a 15-minute ferry ride. Uh, it's called Takong. Tekong, Tekong is what we call it here in Singapore. T e k o n g. That that island is pretty much a horror island. It's known as the horror island of Singapore, uh, and there's that entire island is only for the army. There's an ent- there's like tons of camps there. It's no one else is allowed there except for the military personnel. Uh, it it's made for the basic military training BMT, uh, and that's where I was for the first four months of my NS life. And uh, I will I will admit. At first, I was very, very skeptical, very scared, but uh, it went by quite fast. It was, it was quite nice. I had a lot of good company, a lot of friends to keep me there at, at, at stake. You know, what I mean, I mean, like, I think the main thing that is really important when you're in in the army is 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 friends, because the 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 relationships, the bonds that you make there are are last are, are to last for life. 
because uh, you're, you're not just going through good times, you're going through hard times, tough times together. And uh, those those are the moments and events that really strengthen a relationship and tests the relationship. So uh, every friend I've made in, in, in NS at that point in my life, BMT, was by far the best. And I enjoy that. I mean, I'll show a few photos for you guys. Uh, on If you're watching this on YouTube, then you can see a few photos of me uh, during my time in, uh, in the BMT. It was quite fun. Um, but yeah, and so that was four months from November all the way to March. Uh, and after March was when I went into IDTI. I was given a vocation. I was posted out and they brought me to this place in Clementi, which is, uh, like, I think it's pretty much on the opposite side of the city where I'm staying right now. I'm, I'm in St. Kong right now. And where I'm supposed to go is in Clementi, which is like 30 to 40 minutes away. And, and that was pretty much an issue for me. But uh, yeah, that, that was pretty much, I had to go in for a week and then I'd come back home for the weekends and then I'd go back for the rest of the weekdays. Uh, I did that for the next two months. The first day I went inside there, I, I, was, I was very, very depressed because that week, just the day before that, I went into that Monday I was supposed to go in. Sunday, my parents left. My family, they went back to Indonesia and I was alone in the country. For the first time in my life, I've never been alone. Uh, well, technically I have when I went on school trips and stuff, but this was for a, a, a longer period of time because then it would just be five days, three days. But, but this was for almost two months, two and a half. And uh, it was quite, it was quite tough, tough for me. People might say, hey, you're kind of spoiled, man. What is this? You're not always going to be with your family. You're right. That's true. But uh, unlike most certain teenagers, I'll say most teenagers, they would like to stay away from their parents. But unlike them, I have a very strong relationship with my parents and my family. I'm very family oriented. And so for me, I, I, I took it quite personally when they left. I, I, was, I, was quite, uh, I was quite broken, if you could say. I, I, I made it look like I was kind of strong. I shielded it up made it seem like I was okay, but but I really wasn't at first. I, I was struggling a lot, but I, to be honest, I also kind of enjoyed that freedom, but the issue with having too much freedom is you can lose control, and I tried my very best to keep myself in control and to keep myself responsible, and that's when I met a lot of my good, good friends who are working with me right now up till today, and I'm so grateful that I met them. Uh, they are they're pretty much my buddies here in the, in the Army right now, and I, I don't know where I'd be or what I'd be doing, or the type of man I'd be if it wasn't for them. So uh, really, if you guys are listening, I know you are. Uh, really, hats off to you guys. Thank you so much for being there for me. I don't, I don't, I'm going to not say this very often, but you know, I really do appreciate you guys. And uh, and yeah, um, so the very first day I went into that camp in Clementi, it was very new to me. Uh, there was only like a, a one or two people that I knew were coming with me from my BMT. But other than that, it was a new environment, uh, new people, uh, new training and all that. I was very, very depressed. I, I really, I did not know the definition of depression before that day. I always assumed depression was just another way of saying I'm sad, but like I'm very sad. But no, 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 no. I, I, I felt true depression then and there. I almost, I was on the verge of breaking down because I really, really did not want to be there. I got so used to living my life there in the army in, in BMT uh, in Takong for four months and then now I'm expected to change just in, a, in the span of a day to this new life. I just, I couldn't do it. I, I was very, very weak. I was very volatile. I was very vulnerable. But that's when I met the guys that I just mentioned to you guys before. They, they are the bros, the broskies, the homies. Um, those guys, yeah, they they were there. Uh, we met up. We're, you know, funny enough, we're all Indian. So that, that says something about the Indian Brotherhood. Uh, speaking of which, tomorrow is Deepavali, so uh, happy Deepavali, folks! If you're if you're Indian, if, if you're not Indian, happy Deepavali to you too, I guess. Uh, why not? Uh, so yeah, I mean, once that first day was was through, that first week was literal hell for me. I didn't really make friends with anyone. I was quite secluded, which is not like me at all. I'm I'm the one who's really open. I'm the one who talks to people. I'm the one who like gets out there and starts making friends. That first week was very tough for me. Like I acknowledged people, but I never really like never went out with the intention to bond. I I was quite I was, I was really constricted to myself but the start of that second week i went home i got a change of attitude i talked to my parents on the phone and then i was like you know what here we are i'm already here there's nothing i can do to change it let me just make the best of it and i and i did people need to know why is he wait what's the nun <laughs> uh, 
from then onwards, those those two months were the best, best two months of my life so far. Like, especially the last month, we had this thing called IVT, Infantry Vocational Training, uh, where it was pretty much only Indians and Malays because all the Chinese people, no offense, it's not, I'm not being racist, but this is the truth. Uh, we were all secluded and we were all put into the infantry, which is like the first line of defense. And all the Chinese people who are Singaporeans, who had a higher um, clearance, uh, those guys were pretty much put into the Air, Bo- Air, F- Air Force and a few other locations. I'm not too sure. I don't remember. I think it was a naval naval unit. So they went up to the naval base and a few other Chinese people who are Singaporeans went up to... Uh, they went up to the Air, ba- Air Air Force, yeah, and the rest of them who who were PRs like me, permanent residents, and uh, the rest of them were all in the infantry, uh, vocational training part. But that those three weeks were the most fun I've ever had. We were shooting guns, we were pr- practicing, having fun. We we're doing fire movement. We were like it's pretty much like playing Call of Duty, but then in real life. And uh, first we were just using blanks, and then afterwards we went to this. Uh, tra- uh, training range shooting range and then we actually shot real life rounds with with proper uh proper you know bullets and stuff you know <laughs> uh, those are really really fun um those days i will never forget and you know that was quite fun uh th- those were some good times that i that i you know now look back and i'm like damn yeah i wish i wish i relived those days but it's actually just a few months away i, I mean it's november 3rd now that was around like april may i would say yeah it wasn't even june it was it was around april to may uh th- th- those were the best be- best times and uh yeah i really do miss th- really do miss those guys i'm definitely going to meet up with them once uh this restriction all goes down uh but yeah i mean right now i'm working at the I- i'm at an air base technically but uh, i'm at a- i'm at a base next to the air base i'm i'm working where uh, a lot of ammunition is dealt with so all the most important there are like a lot of bunkers here like filled with like uh uh rpg ammo um weapon ammos and all that stuff i don't want to reveal too much because technically this is like classified information but not the fact that this is an ammunition center because that's on google already but uh the location and all yeah obviously re- uh, not revealed i am a security trooper under the mp command military police command um so what i just what i do is pretty much just to protect the camp i uh, sit in a box and uh with a gun and just uh wait for people to come and leave and whoever comes in check their clearance check their id uh if any threat comes in then i'm gonna have to act accordingly so i'm pretty much protecting the camp uh and it's not that not that exciting it's kind of boring really because nothing happens like it's not it's not like every day you see someone come in and try to break into your camp I really do hope they don't do that because that makes my job just that much harder. <laughs> but if they do, then then I guess I have to do my 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 work properly. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much what my life is like so far. The good thing is I'm working three days and I get to go home for another three days. So this is a three in three out situation, which pretty much pretty much just cuts down my entire two years into one year. If you think about it, I'm only working for half the time. And the other half, I'm home. I have free time. I can work on myself, and I can do stuff that that you know that that matters. Uh, no offense, I'm not saying NS doesn't matter, but to me, I don't feel like it. It you know it's gonna change my life some d- dr- dramatic and drastic way. Has it affected my life? Definitely. Has it made me a better person? Most definitely. But am I gonna do it again if I was ever, you know, given the choice to do it or not? I don't think so. I'd rather spend my time going to university and making something out of my life then uh, then stay here and uh you know just just wonder what i would have been like if i went to university you know what i mean yeah that's that's what i feel like but with that being said that is pretty much the end of today's podcast because i talked about what i would talk about and i told you guys i'm just going to talk about my army life and that this is what it is this is what it is so far i don't have any more stories i will have more stories when i cross the next one year mark which will be the end of my ns life and then if this podcast season or uh this entire thing i'm doing still exists hopefully it does because it's going well uh then i will do an episode on that when it happens but anyways guys thank you so much for listening to this on spotify uh if you're listening to this on spotify then yeah do follow and uh answer the poll on the in the bottom 
And if you're watching this on YouTube, please do make sure to subscribe, like, turn on the bell notification icon and uh, comment down what you liked about me. And if you want me to talk about something specific, go ahead and tell me. If you want to be a guest, go ahead and tell me. Add me on Instagram, contact me, and we can work something out. Anyway, guys, stay safe. Uh, happy Deepavali to all my Indian folks and have an amazing weekend. Fantastic, good luck. Okay, that is very good. Sugar batle hai. Batle. Let's. Sir, how was the tea today? Nice. Sir, how was the tea today? Uh, above average. Above average. Thank you very much, sir. You can also leave my house right now. <laughs>